Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I hope you had a good weekend. Thank you for liking the videos, taking the time to subscribe. I want to get a look at the dust, some areas of rain. We'll get into that, but I also want to touch upon the hurricane season uh, because we're getting closer. So it's at the point now where I'm watching the trends and the patterns to see if anything may try to develop before the actual season starts, which sometimes does happen. Now, the season itself starts June 1st. We're about to enter into May, and occasionally we get a storm in May, and I'll, I'll show you that. And then as we work our way out in time, August through October, that is the busiest part of our hurricane season as we get deeper into the summer, early in the fall when those water temperatures warm. So what am I watching out for uh, as we lead up to the start of hurricane season? The first thing is the amount of moisture out there. I watch the dust in the dry air and how much moisture may be available because to get storms to form, you need to have, you need to have moisture, you need to uh, develop those storms, get that rain going. Well, this is the outlook for May. Where you see this green shading, this is where we're gonna have above average rain. We're transitioning into the wet season, not quite yet, but pretty soon for some of us. And with that, we expect more rain as we get into May and of course, June. But this here is above average rain. So it's even more than that as we work our way through the Caribbean and then out into the Atlantic. So this is telling me that we're not going to have a ton of dry air here, which means we could have a few disturbances very close to the Caribbean that we need to uh, keep an eye out for. But that's just one thing. You need the moisture, but there's other ingredients that need to be in play. Another ingredient it would be the water temperatures. Now, here's the, the broad picture, Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic. On this map, where you're seeing some of these oranges, yellows, and reds, those are above average water temperatures for this time of year. And you could see much of the Gulf, almost all of the Caribbean, and back through a good portion of the Atlantic is running above average. The Caribbean is well above average in many locations. Let me zoom down and show you that here. And this is not a typical. So that's telling me that if we have any area of rain, like I was just covering in May, and it's somewhere over the Caribbean, it may be able to feed off of these very warm water temperatures. And that's why I do believe there could be that pre-season tropical storm that will try to develop kind of close to home. Now here are the actual water temperatures. Gulf of Mexico, 24, 25 degrees uh, Celsius. So running in the 70s Fahrenheit, not conducive for development, but down in the Caribbean, about 28 degrees uh, Celsius, even a little bit higher, 29 degrees as you get closer to Honduras and Nicaragua. So you're looking at about 82 to almost 84 degrees in some spots. So that's another ingredient that is conducive for some development. The water is warm enough to help give a system some energy. But of course, you need to take a look at what's going on in the upper atmosphere as well, what's going on above our heads. Now, a lot of times this time of year, it's a little turbulent up there. There's a lot of mixing and craziness going on up there, some old fronts. So it's hard for systems to develop. And that's one of the reasons this time of year, we usually don't have a whole lot. Name storms in the month of April, there's been seven name storms on record. In May though, 50 named storms on record and four of those storms have become hurricanes. So May has had four hurricanes and again, a lot of named storms. About every other year, you get a system forming before the hurricane season starts. The official start of the hurricane season, just about 40 days away now on June 1st, but I was just showing you some of the ingredients I'm watching, and I do believe we have a better chance, a higher chance of this year to see a pre-season system develop. We'll see if, we, if that forms, and I'll be tracking it, but I want you to know that I'm watching all the ingredients out there at this point, the pattern and everything like that, to see if we have something that tries to develop over the next few weeks. Now, if something does develop and something eventually will develop, the first name on the list this year, it's Alberto, Beryl, Chris, Debbie, Ernesto, Francine, and Gordon after that. This is the Atlantic Basin. So anything that develops in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, the Eastern Pacific has a different set of names. Now, so you may be hearing a different A name soon, but that may not necessarily be the Atlantic side. We're looking at Alberto on the Atlantic side. Now, also watching the dust that is moving in, and that's actually one ingredient I keep an eye out for as we go through the hurricane season. Sometimes you get, dust is very hard long-term to kind of 
kind of predict in these patches of dry air, that could really change a hurricane season. So know that I'm on top of it for you. So here we are on the Caribbean. Some of us haven't gotten the dust yet in the Eastern Caribbean. Others have had it moving in as expected yesterday. Some of it got in here and today we're going to see some more of it moving in. This brighter color here, that's thicker dust and that's what's headed our way and I covered that in the previous video. So thinking of you, if you have any breathing problems, especially across the Eastern Caribbean throughout the next uh, four to five days, uh, we have a dust alert in place and yes, some of this dirt, uh, dust, dust, kind of dirt in the sky, dust will get uh, closer to Jamaica, Cayman Islands, even Belize and Honduras. Honduras later this week. It won't be as thick as it moves into the Western Caribbean, but some of it will move toward the Western Caribbean. Other spots I'm watching, a few areas of rain around. You see it here as we take you throughout our Monday afternoon. So later today, scattered showers, Colombia, Venezuela, Suriname. We have that high chance of rain. If you're in Suriname, let me know what you get or don't get today. And let me know if you do get any flooding. Also the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, almost every day, we've had some showers and storms around, not every day you've gotten them, but just in different locations around. Same thing in the Dominican Republic, and we'll do that again for tomorrow. Scattered showers and storms. Guyana and Suriname were still active. Much of the Eastern Caribbean, though, we're watching out for the dust. And then as we get through the middle of the week, uh, keep an eye out some of the uh, moisture here trying to build up. You see over toward uh, the uh, Southern Caribbean, near Costa Rica and Panama, we may get a better chance of some rain as we work our way throughout the week. Big picture, one front moving off. Uh, the United States, bringing some cooler weather to Florida, and even over toward the northern Bahamas, a shot of some cooler air will be trying to work in. That may give us a few spotty showers in the northern uh, Bahamas with our wide view in the Bermuda, especially by tonight, but tomorrow, a higher chance of rain as this front continues to move in. You see Bermuda by the time we get into our Tuesday afternoon, that chance of some wet weather. Another system here up toward the Great Lakes, and I'll be watching that just kind of diving across much of the U.S. and much of Mexico dry, some spots way too dry. We need to get some rain, and then you see this system on Wednesday winding up toward New England and the Atlantic region of Canada, and here that is. So going through the day today, many spots are on the dry side. One system leaves, another system starts to move in. So as we go from today into tomorrow, watching this, and you see here as we get into our Tuesday afternoon, scattered showers from the Great Lakes starting to get closer toward New England. That'll start to work in by tomorrow night. See tomorrow night, some of that rain moving in. And then by Wednesday, some of that rain moving across. We'll see some good rain showers in uh, Newfoundland, for example, as we get into our Wednesday afternoon, watching Nova Scotia for that chance of rain. More active Tuesday night into Wednesday for the Atlantic region of Canada. Now, I mentioned the buildup of moisture near Costa Rica and Panama next week. That's the spot I watch because eventually that moisture gets over here and this is an area that could try to develop uh, as we go over the next few weeks as well on the eastern Pacific side. The hurricane season there starts earlier, May 15th, because water temperatures are typically even warmer, so an earlier start to the hurricane season. So Jamaica, we have a passing shower or storm possible today, a 30% chance. We'll get a couple in Jamaica. Let me know uh, what you get, or again, what you don't get. Cayman Islands, 20% chance. 20 to 30% chance the next couple days for us in Trinidad and Tobago. Please keep me posted on the dust, what you're kind of seeing out there. Uh, hopefully you're not having breathing issues, but if you've if you've been noticing any changes, uh, let me know. Barbados, rain chance about 20%. Some of the dust nearby. St. Lucia, some dust has been feeding in, should get a little thicker by later today and tonight. Grenada, rain chance only 20%, 10 to 20% chance with that chance of some uh, dust around St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Martinique, rain chance 20%, slight uptick tomorrow in Dominica, may catch an isolated shower, a 30% chance. Guadalupe, a 30% chance for tomorrow. Antigua and Barbuda, rain chance midweek, 20 to 30%. St. Kitts and Nevis, about an isolated uh, chance, 30% chance on Wednesday. Anguilla and St. Bart's, a few isolated showers today, 40% chance, and even 30% chance St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia. And you see here in Puerto Rico, this is generally afternoon and evening stuff, scattered showers and storms possible. U.S. and British Virgin Islands, we may get a couple of more around today. Dominican Republic, just like Puerto Rico, some scattered showers and storms. Not as much in Haiti, but we could see a shower finding uh, our way, a 30% chance. 
northern Bahamas today. We'll see that chance of some showers with that front around. Turks and Caicos, 10 to 20% chance. We work our way through Cuba. We're mainly dry and on the uh, warm side as we go throughout the day. Belize, mainly dry. And as we get toward the Yucatan of, of uh, Mexico, only a 10% chance. Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire, hard to find a shower. We need to get some rain. We'll be watching some of that dust working in really by midweek. And there we go in Bermuda with that front moving in, the higher chance of rain for tomorrow. Costa Rica, you see on Wednesday how that rain chance picks up. And in uh, Panama, Guyana, scattered showers picking up a higher chance tomorrow and Wednesday. But that wet weather around Suriname, watching out for the areas of flooding for today and a 30 to 40% chance of rain in northern Venezuela. So looking ahead, as I was showing you at the beginning of this video, a, wet, a wetter trend for May, watching that and the above average water temperatures, which could mean some early season development. Uh, overall, that's something I'll keep you posted on. I want to let you know everything I'm kind of seeing behind the scenes in the short term watching some of that dust around hurricane season again starting on june 1st so thank you for sharing this information i'll get to those comments throughout the day have a wonderful start to the week